Hi everybody, just wanted to say hello. My name is Tom Walsh. I'm the state representative from the 12th Essex District, which right now is uh, wards one through four and ward five, precincts one and three. Uh, come January, due to redistricting, the uh, uh, precinct two and ward five will also be part of the 12th Essex District. So I look forward to once again representing uh, the people in ward five, precinct two. So uh, the, the district then will be wards one through five will comprise the 12th Essex District. I uh, just wanted to start off, it's been uh, a little while since the last time I spoke with you via cable and I uh, just wanted to say again hello. I hope everybody had a great 4th of July. I hope the summer is going well and I uh, just wanted to touch base on a, on a few issues uh, starting with the budget and just to let people know that uh, with the budget this year uh, our school aid has increased about 25 percent which is a significant amount and uh, it is just under 31 million dollars roughly I think it's 30 million 868 somewhere in in that uh, that figure I mean I always feel that it's incredibly important that uh, our priority in the budget is our local aid funding and our school funding and I had the opportunity a couple of years ago to serve on the Education Committee when we did the Student Opportunity Act which really made a huge commitment to uh, funding our school systems across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for over the course of the next seven years. Um, some great things came out of that bill and uh, we are committed to the funding and fortunately we have been able to keep pace and actually do a little bit better. One of the other uh, funding mechanisms that the state uh, really puts a priority on is the Chapter 90 funding. Chapter 90 goes to roads and bridge uh, projects locally. So the Chapter 90 money for the City of Peabody is roughly about 1.2 million dollars in state aid and that goes to the basics of fixing Lowell Street, Linfield Street, uh, Lynn Street, Margin Street, what, what, wherever the um, streets need to be repaired and a lot of the, uh, the smaller the streets in the side streets and in the subdivisions um, that money goes to the city as they determine which streets need to be repaired so that's always incredibly important. So speaking of roads and bridges and travel one of the projects that we worked on along with Senator Lovely, Representative Kearns, and uh, Mayor Betancourt, and really the, the city of Peabody, uh, city officials, was securing Logan Express once again in the city of Peabody. For years, Logan Express was located on the southbound side of Route 1 in Peabody. Uh, during the pandemic, all the uh, Logan Express bus services had closed down, and we had to uh, push pretty hard to get Peabody back open. Um, we were successful this year working with, again, uh, the delegation and local officials, uh, Massport, and uh, Simon Properties, which is the North Shore Mall. Um, Massport determined that um, the ridership because of the Route 1 location was not as significant as it could be. And after their study, they determined that the mall, North Shore Mall, really provided a better opportunity for people from different parts of the North Shore to get uh, better access to the buses that go then into Logan Airport. So it's not only for people who travel, but it's also for people in the area who work at, at the airport. They can park at the Peabody location and take the bus in and then return when their shift is over. And what that does is it reduces the amount of parking that is needed at the airport because it's always a, always um, a problem. So uh, it, it, it's a tremendous, I think, uh, project, uh, program, and uh, if you happen to go by the mall, almost every time you go by now that parking lot is full. It's been incredibly successful. We're grateful to the North Shore Mall for participating in this program and look forward to extending it um, in the years to come. A couple of the MassDOT projects that are going on, you're all familiar, I'm sure, with the Waters River Bridge project, which is the Route 128 project, uh, really running from Endicott Street in Danvers to 114 in Peabody. And this is an issue that we've been dealing with for the last couple of years. What happened was the Waters River Bridge, which I don't think people really realize there was a bridge there, um, it's right on 128 and it's kind of level with the highway. The bridge is really underneath. Um, was in such disrepair that it had to be replaced. And I used to joke with Representative Speliotis all the time that he got the bridge because the bridge technically is in Danvers, but the residents who were most impacted all live in Peabody. So that again, if you're familiar with it, is where the sound walls are now on either side of Route 128. And what they did is they widened the highway so that the 
there is an, an acceleration lane coming off of Endicott Street in Danvers and then a deceleration lane as you come up and you take your uh, right onto Route 114 westbound. That project uh, is something that we have worked with MassDOT. They have been terrific as far as I'm concerned working with us, um, informing the neighbors uh, every step of the way. They'll give us uh, kind of an outlook for the, the, um, the next three weeks letting us know what's going on so that we can let the neighbors know as well. Um, you know, neighbors have been impacted. There's been uh, noise they, they, when they were doing the pilings. Some of that was uh, nighttime work and that was, that was uh, a little bit of an inconvenience to say the least for a lot of the neighbors on the Esquire Drive side and in the Tammy Lane, Loris Road area. So um, we're cognizant of that. Mass Dot is cognizant of that. Very appreciative of everybody's patience and I think as things going, if this weather stays the way that we've enjoyed the last few weeks, um, they expect that uh, they should be finished by the end of the year. There's still some nighttime work that will happen. If you go down there now, you'll notice that the median uh, still has not been completed and a lot of that dirt will come out and it, the, the surface will be much uh, more level with, with the lanes themselves. So that's been a great project. I think it's a huge improvement. Obviously, the safety of our motorist uh, driving over the, the Waters River Bridge was paramount, so it had to be done. And uh, I think it's a good project. And, and I will say, as, a, uh, as an elected official and a, and a, a legislator, um, I learned a lot from this project on, on um, how to get things done. I guess segueing from Route 128, Route 114 has been an issue uh, about, well, almost a year ago now, well, a little less than a year. Uh, we met with the Peabody City Council, then Councilor Saslaw, convene a meeting, uh, invited uh, MassDOT, invited uh, the state delegation, Senator Lovely, Representative Kearns and I, um, to uh, the council to discuss some of the safety concerns along Route 114. Um, it's been no secret. This is something that I dealt with as a city councilor uh, my years in the legislature. Uh, Route 114's got some challenges to it. Um, so we have been working, uh, and when I say we, I mean Senator Lovely and Representative Kearns and, and myself, uh, have been working with MassDOT. We meet with them periodically. Right now they're going through the uh, uh, analysis of all the data regarding uh, crash counts, um, where the violations occur, any of the, uh, you know, the citations from police and whatnot, and trying to determine where the most uh, uh, challenging intersections are and how best to resolve some of these issues. And really, they've broken it down into uh, the things that we can do relatively quickly, and I expect that we'll get some answers from them before the end of the summer on the small things, and that's some signage, some lining of the streets at intersections and whatnot. And then you go into a, uh, a bigger phase where you're looking at um, intersections and how many curb cuts there are and how we can reduce that and really calm traffic a little bit. And then uh, the third phase would be significant, um, uh, a significant project, which will take resources, um, which are not part of the plan right now. Um, so it's ongoing. We're aware of it, you know, particularly on, uh, you know, with Representative Kearns and I, we kind of, um, uh, the districts abut. So part of Route 114 is in the 13th Essex District. Um, the rest is in the 12th Essex District in, in the, the PUD Danvers area. And, you know, look, I, I've always had concerns and, and we're trying to figure out how to resolve issues at the Esquire Drive intersection. The Loris Road intersection has been a real challenge because we've had some accidents there where people are taking a left turn and into the neighborhood from uh, the east, uh, heading eastbound on Route 114 and, and cars are not slowing down and stopping in time. So uh, we're aware of those concerns. We're working not only with MassDOT but with, with uh, our local police as well in trying to uh, get that as safe as we can. As well, we're still talking about road safety. Um, I'd just like to remind everybody that if you are planning on renewing your license or looking to get the real ID so that you can use that for uh, travel, um, the real ID program will end next May. So even if your license doesn't expire for a couple of years, but you want that real ID, especially if you plan on getting on a plane or uh, you know, crossing over to Canada or whatever, uh, along with your passport, you would need your real ID so, and, and to get into federal buildings. So aside from transportation issues, which I just talked about, one of the issues that I've been working on, um, mostly with Representative Jamie Belsito from Topsfield, has been the issue of um, 
nurse, the nursing shortage and, and staffing issues. And this really came about from a conversation that uh, the North Shore delegation had with um, officials from Beverly Hospital several months ago. And what we learned is that it, it's not just um, not enough nurses in the hospitals, but it's also the training. You know, we, we, we hear about people applying, you know, at Salem State College, or Salem, Salem State University, I should say. Um, they, they take so many nursing students, and the question was, well, if all these people want to be in the nursing program, why are we not accepting more? And it turns out that we have a shortage of instructors as well. And uh, it's significant um, as far as the cost of training a nursing student. So there are a lot of things that we need to look at. And we have had the opportunity over the last couple of months to meet with um, officials from, from the hospital, from Salem State University, from the Department of Education, um, the Department of Public Health. And we're trying to put together some type of program, some, some way to uh, offer incentives, uh, figure out how we can attract more people into academia so that they would want to become instructors. Uh, one of the challenges that we have is that, you know, because I thought we, we hear a lot about people who have left the healthcare field because of burnout. So I thought, well, gee, maybe these are the people that we should be focusing on that may, would, may be interested in uh, teaching. But as it turns out, uh, you get into uh, labor agreements and everything else. So you sometimes somebody who has left the field still could make more part-time in the healthcare profession than they can uh, as an instructor. So we're trying to figure all that out and see how best we can do this to solve this problem. And it's not unique to the North Shore. This is a problem across the country, but uh, it doesn't mean that we don't want to solve the problem here. So anything that we can do to alleviate uh, the, the crisis that we have today, uh, we'll, we'll work on and get it done. You know, look, mental health is, is a huge concern. Um, you know, we see it every day and, and that seems to be everything. We, we all feel this sense of anxiety, I think, right now when you talk to people across Peabody, you know, in, in town or anyone you talk to, you turn on the TV, uh, mental health is a huge issue. Uh, there is a significant amount of anxiety among our school children, which is a huge concern. Um, I think people in the workforce feel somewhat pressure, some, some because they're home more than they want to be, they'd rather be back in the office, others because they have to be back in the office and want to be home. It's, it's, we're figuring everything out, I think, post-pandemic here. So um, we did a comprehensive bill that is uh, hopefully uh, going to be resolved in the next few, few weeks. So part of the mental health bill would really require that you mandate a mental health uh, physical, just like you go for your, your, your regular physical. Uh, that would be part of it, so that, that we make sure that people are, um, are them, that their mental health is, is, is being tended to. Um, and then also creates the 988 suicide hotline um, so that people can pick up that phone when they are in a uh, desperate situation and hopefully get the assistance that they need. So it's a huge deal and it's something that uh, I think we in the legislature can be proud of. Um, and hopefully we'll move things forward in a positive direction. I had the opportunity uh, a couple months ago to host the uh, school-based mental health centers uh, rally. Uh, it was via Zoom, uh, but I was very proud to be part of that. And you know, we, we look at Peabody Veterans Memorial High School and the work that's being done there at their school-based health center um, with Allison Kilcoyne. And uh, it really is a safe haven for a lot of people. It's, it's where they can, you know, the kids can get their flu shots if they need. It can be a place just, to, it's, it's, it's a safe harbor for them sometimes when they're stressed out. We've had the opportunity over the years, and Representative Speliotis used to host uh, a group. They would come into the state house, um, and you would listen to some of these students who are high achievers. You know, some of them work so hard, they're straight A students, they play sports, they're in drama, all these things, and they put a, an incredible amount of stress on themselves. And the school-based mental health center is a place they can go, uh, kind of get everything in perspective, and it really is something that I think is um, um, underutilized. And I think as we discuss the other issues, uh, it's something that you will see grow in the years ahead. We, we hear a lot about ARPA funding, American Rescue Plan Act, and I guess I would caution, uh, one of the phrases that I hear that I cringe every time I hear it is that the state is flush with cash. 
Um, yes, we do have additional funding. Yes, our revenues are higher than projected, but it is not a uh, bottomless pit and it is not a blank check for everything. So we have to be really responsible on how we choose to spend these funds. In the last round of, of APA funding that the state did, um, the legislature did, we included $500,000 for the Lawrence River Watershed District, which is really down off of Walnut Street in Peabody. And that will go towards flood mitigation. And that will work in conjunction with some other grants that, that the city of Peabody has received. Working with community development, we were able to secure that funding uh, through the legislature. And uh, that, will, that will help with the ongoing issues of, of flooding in downtown Peabody. Um, we were also able to get $200,000 for new lighting in the downtown area, and that's something you'll see uh, probably in the next year or two, you'll actually see the physical change uh, with that. It's a federal program. It came out of the pandemic, uh, really when, when things shut down um, about two years ago now. That was uh, a way to assist uh, states and then cities and towns in making sure that uh, they didn't end up in bankruptcy. So it was a way to get some projects going. Um, some of the funding now, really it's, it's one-time funding. Uh, my concern about it uh, at the state level particularly is that we spend that on projects and the, we don't spend it on um, adding positions because you won't be able to sustain that further down the road. So more of it is going towards um, capital improvements. Another area of funding which is not opera related, but the legislature also um, adopted a transportation bond bill earlier this year. Uh, in that is a, uh, a, a portion with $175 million set aside to um, design and build the workout of uh, charging stations because we're seeing more and more electric vehicles, but we're not seeing a lot of charging stations. Uh, there may be a couple in Peabody. I think when you go to the mall, you can, there are a couple spaces reserved for them. But it's really important as we push more energy efficient vehicles that we also have the infrastructure to support that um, as, as we move forward. So that's something that's, that's pretty exciting. And talking about bond bills in general, the $175 million that I just referenced um, will not come all at once. And in any bond bill, and a lot of times when we, when we do bond bills, whether it's an environmental bond bill, economic development, whatever it is, um, I try to include something in that bond bill that will benefit the city of Peabody, the residents of Peabody. It doesn't guarantee that that money is coming. It's not sitting in a bank account. What happens is when a bond bill is adopted, then each year the governor's office, the executive office, um, administration and finance determines what projects they want to move forward on and they go to the bond market. So what I guess the best way to describe it is it is a placeholder. The best example I can give in the city of Peabody where we benefited from a bond bill is the Crystal Lake project which took many years and that really was um, efforts that started way back with Senator Berry, uh, Representative Spiliotis, Representative Speliotis. Um, and has moved forward so that a few years ago, uh, you know, the city of Peabody, Mayor Bonfanti, then uh, Mayor Betancourt, uh, coordinated the efforts and that's why we have the Crystal Lake project which is incredibly beautiful. Um, but it took a lot of years and it wasn't just money sitting in a bank account. You have to go and justify your project, you have to promote it, you have to show all the details and then hopefully you will win a spot on that uh, that list of things that the executive branch will then go out and bond for. So that's how that works. So there's not money sitting in a bank account. Uh, more locally, uh, something that's incredibly important as we go through summer and the uh, election season comes upon us is we were successful in securing um, Brooksby Village uh, as a sub-precinct once again. Um, this is something that uh, was the request of the city council and the city clerk, uh, Allison Danforth, uh, Councilor Daigle, who was the ward council of Ward 4, uh, initiated the motion on the council floor. Council unanimously voted for uh, what's called a home rule petition. And then that came to the legislature where Senator Lovely, Representative Kearns, and I have filed the bill uh, that allows for um, the precinct at Brooksby Village. That's required every 10 years. It's part of the decennial census. 
And once the numbers are approved and the district is approved, then you have to get approval for that sub-precinct. So the language of the, um, of the bill this past year is almost exactly the language that it was 10 years ago and 20 years ago. And the reason that, um, you know, talking with the clerk, when she talks about having a sub-precinct at Brooksby Village, it's roughly 1,800 people who live at Brooksby Village. And there's a concern about traveling up and down Route 114, and, and there's other uh, safety and convenience issues, I guess. So um, it was the request of the city to do that. We think it's a good thing, and uh, we were successful. So this coming fall, again, Brooksby Village will have its own precinct. It's Ward 4, Precinct 3A. So it doesn't increase the numbers of the ward in any way. It's just it's an additional voting precinct. In every legislative season, uh, there are things that we are pushing for that we hope get over that, that finish line. And for me, uh, I have a couple local things, but I just wanted to take a minute on sports betting because I think it's important. Um, you know, the courts decided a few years ago that um, sports betting was allowed, could be allowed. And Massachusetts is um, in the process of debating the issue, unfortunately. We filed a bill a year ago on sports betting. There are uh, several that were combined. The House acted on it. The Senate has their own version, which is significantly different than what the House has done. So the conference committee has been working uh, diligently on that, and I'm hopeful that we come to a resolution on that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're leaving money on the table. People are betting. People are crossing the border, uh, going to Seabrook and whatever. And, and, you know, not that I'm not that I'm encouraging everybody to bet, but it's part of what people are doing and it's not unlike casinos where if you choose to spend your money you only have so much discretionary funding some people it's, it's a sport to them they'll place small bets but we're losing that revenue to our surrounding states and i think it's, it's important that we address that so i'm hopeful um, but if we don't get there this year uh, i'll be incredibly disappointed but it will be a priority for the next session if it does not happen this year Another piece of legislation that I have great interest in, and this really is something that um, came to our attention in a couple ways. Um, there are some local businesses, actually I think the city of Peabody was a victim as well, um, with the theft of catalytic converters. And um, the, the metals in the catalytic converters in our vehicles apparently is worth a lot of money and people are stealing them. And there's nothing worse than getting up in the morning and going starting your car and it sounds like a monster truck because uh, the catalytic converter is, is missing, so it sounds like your muffler is missing. Um, so there's legislation that is moving. Uh, I testified on it uh, with the Transportation Committee. Uh, I've spoken with um, uh, our local police about this. Uh, they have a huge concern. Um, and what it would do, it would require that um, junk dealers and metal dealers uh, register uh, the catalytic converters as they come in. And, is that correct? <laughs> I should know it. Uh, it basically, it's, it's, it's a way to stop people from just dumping them, getting some cash, and moving on. They would have to justify where, where the catalytic converter came from. So uh, more people would be held accountable, and I think it would reduce the amount of theft. So just a couple other items uh, before I'm on my way, I guess. And one of them, I had the pleasure of nominating Carolyn Wynn. Uh, who is the director of the uh, Peabody Council on Aging for uh, what is titled The Heroines Among Us. And this is from the Massachusetts Coalition for the Status of Women. And each year um, we nominate people from across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts who stand out as um, strong leaders. And I thought that Carolyn was a great choice this year to be nominated because of all the work she and her team have done at the uh, Council on Aging over the last couple of years. You know, making sure that people got to the doctor's appointments even when everybody was at home. Uh, making sure that people were fed. Uh, they, they put together a couple hundred, 250 meals a week uh, to be delivered to people. Um, trying to keep that center operating, trying to get the information to the seniors who needed it. It's really remarkable what they did. And it's nice to see that the senior center is now coming back into uh, its vibrancy and uh, people again can, can attend down there. But I just wanted to recognize Carolyn and her team for all the great work they did. It's, it's really remarkable what they accomplished. And, and one last thing, for those of you 
during the summertime who are having a couple cold drinks, whether it's a soda or a beer or whatever, that pup tab at the, at, at the top, that, that little piece is pure aluminum. And we're collecting those this year and we're donating them to the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, this is a charity. Um, they're actually in Charlestown and they have 10 units, uh, small apartments, uh, where they provide housing for families whose children are receiving pediatric care at one of our hospitals, um, Mass General, uh, Boston Children's. Um, and really what it is, it, it's a way to draw attention to uh, the work that they do. Um, they're, they're servicing families who um, really are, are, are in tough situations, very, very stressful situations. And it's a way for the family to come in, have a safe place to stay, have a hot meal when they come home at the end of a, a long stay at the hospital all day and uh, just a way to, to provide some care to them. And what they do is great work, and if we can help a little bit, uh, we'd like to do that. They also have a website, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that you have the link, um, because one of the other things they're looking for, they, they told me that at Christmas time, everybody wants to be so generous and donate toys and things like that, and that, that's not what they need. What they need are clean towels, sheets, shower curtains, things like that, uh, so that those units are always fresh. So when a new family comes in, uh, you know, they're not using raggedy old towers or whatever. Everything is new and fresh, and uh, it's something that they don't have to worry about. So um, if you so choose, that's, that's something uh, I'd just like you to be aware of. That's something that we're, we're involved in, uh, not as legislators, but uh, uh, just it was a way to get involved. So since the last time I, I met with everybody, uh, we have moved offices from uh, one floor to another. So we are room 185 now and our telephone number has changed. It is now 617-722-2960. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to chat with everybody. Um, hopefully the rest of the summer is as beautiful as today is. And, and again, anytime anybody needs to contact us, uh, you can use that phone number. Our email at the State House is thomas.walsh at mahouse.gov. Thanks.